Hello, it's Bruce Williams again, and today I would like to present the fourth lecture of my series of Gross Pathology of Non-Human Primates, in which we are going to cover the cardiovascular system. As I do at the beginning of all of my lectures, I want to thank those friends and colleagues who provided me these images either directly or through online collections, which allow me to put these lectures together. Let's start with a viral disease affecting the hearts of a limited range of species including non-human primates and other primates such as man, mice, and elephants. It is the primary reason why elephants appear to be frightened of mice. They seem to know what's going on. This particular virus is a cardiovirus of the family Picornaviridae and is known as encephalomyocarditis virus. And if you can remember the name, you can remember its effects on the affected species. Mice and other rodents are the only species that actually get the encephalitis form. Primates and elephants primarily or exclusively get the myocardial disease which is well demonstrated in this case of a uh, heart which shows uh, biventricular dilation as well as these coalescing areas of white which are pointed to by these two arrows. Encephalomyocarditis causes a polyphasic necrosis and degeneration of the myocardium. So these areas of white are a combination of degeneration and necrosis of the myocardium, replacement fibrosis after loss of those cardiomyocytes because you can never make them back, as well as occasional mineralization. A large component of these white patches is also infiltrates of lymphocytes and macrophages, which are prominent in these lesions. Lesions of affected animals will uh, be generally sequela of heart failure, including effusions in the pericardium, abdomen, and within the thorax, as well as profound pulmonary edema and chronic hepatic congestion with necrosis of central lobular hepatocytes. The disease is harbored by the rodent reservoir and is spread by fecal contamination of food or water or ingestion of rodents, which is very common in uh, uh, non-human primates who have access to the outside environment. As I will often say in these lectures, if it fits in the mouth of a non-human primate, it goes in the mouth of a non-human primate. In this older picture of a baboon by Dr. Gene Hubbard, you can see the, this animal died of encephalomyocarditis virus infection. You can see the fluid around the mouth, which is, came pouring out, um, is the pulmonary edema associated with heart failure. Another way that these animals would get access to uh, encephalomyocarditis virus via rodents was the uh, feeding of pinky mice. Pinky mice or, or uh, other types of mice are often given to non-human primates for environmental enrichment. Uh, back in the day, um, these pinky mice were not checked for a wide range of pathogens, viral and bacterial pathogens, and often resulted in death of these animals. Nowadays, the cottage industry of pinky mice, which seems like an odd business, um, these animals are tested uh, and regulated for the presence of a number of viral and bacterial pathogens, so we don't see these outbreaks any longer. Another picture of the, uh, the dependent edema that may be seen uh, in affected monkeys or non-human primates. When we talk about bacterial diseases of the cardiovascular system, 
we obviously have to discuss the possibility of fibrinosuppurative or, or fibrinous valvulitis, which is also known as vegetative valvular endocarditis. These are incrustations of fibrin, bacterial colonies, and small numbers of, of neutrophils. Um, it's a very boring lesion, uh, which is often seen in animals that have either uh, implants or chronic indwelling catheters. The two most common factors associated with vegetative valvular endocarditis in any species are going to be indwelling catheters, which are the portal for bacteria, primarily for the environment, and some form of immunosuppression, often due to corticosteroid administration. Um, those are almost always seen in cases of vegetative valvular endocarditis if you carefully uh, look at the history. You can never go wrong if somebody asks you for causes of uh, VVE to cite staph, strep, and coliforms, bacteria that are omnipresent in the environment. Once they get in that indwelling catheter, they're going to circulate within the body. A particular bacterial disease that has caused problems over the years, not seen too much anymore in primate colonies, is Streptococcus pneumoniae, previously known as Diplococcus pneumoniae. A couple things I want you to see in this image. Okay, there is abundant fibrin within the pericardial space. Two very important things about this. Number one, when you see a lot of fibrin in a potential space, the potential spaces are the pericardial sac, the joints, the pleural space, the peritoneum, and the meninges. When you see abundant fibrin in that in primates, I want you to think about sepsis, okay? The other thing I want you to think about is anytime you see a lot of fibrin, just for a minute, think about streptococcal infections. They're not the, certainly not the only bacterium that can cause fibrin, but much like coliforms, which have a endotoxin, which causes damage to endothelial cells, vasculitis, leakage of fibrin, streptococci, especially the potent ones, like Streptococcus pneumoniae, have cytolytic exotoxins, which also will damage endothelium, resulting in a tremendous outpouring of fibrin. So whenever I see a lot of fibrin in an animal, I always think about, is there a streptococcal species, uh, sorry, yeah, streptococcal species, which can cause this lesion? And in primates and guinea pigs and a number of other species, Streptococcus pneumoniae is one that certainly can cause this particular lesion. It is generally transmitted to the animals by humans, especially in the wintertime. Um, when it gets cold, we get stressed. We all have carrying strep pneumoniae in our respiratory tracts, and we will shed it. And uh, non-human primates who are exposed to it can develop severe disease. Here's another greatly dilated heart, almost filling the entire thoracic cavity in this cinemalgus macaque. There is biventricular dilation of the heart. The animal is in heart failure. There is an effusion, if you look very closely, within the thorax. There is a mild nodularity to the liver, which is probably enlarged, suggesting chronic uh, passive congestion from a failing heart or congestive heart failure. And this represents a condition that has emerged in animals which were raised in Texas over the last decade, and an emerging disease which is moving up through Texas into the rest of the U.S is Chagas disease, or infection by, infection by the organism Trypanosoma cruzi. These animals generally had access to the 
outside environment where they came in contact either with the vector, which a triatomid beetle, such as the kissing bug or assassin bug, um, or with the reservoir hosts, such as rodents or possums. While direct feeding of the insect vectors on macaques, which are uh, or other non-human primates, which are generally pretty alert and uh, don't stand for that sort of stuff, is probably not the way that this was uh, transmitted. But these insect vectors may also nest in the triangular tops of corn cribs where a lot of these animals are housed outdoors and they will shed the organism in their feces from above, also known as colloquially the fecal rain. In acute cases, you may often see the organisms. And the lesions is, are most severe in the right atrium and the ventricle. The problem occurs in chronic disease, such as this particular case, in which organisms are few and difficult to find and it generally presents as a lymphoplasmacytic myocarditis, very similar to what we saw with encephalomyocarditis virus infection. In this particular, in, in chronic disease, um, the inflammation is often concentrated in the apex of the heart. The heart is generally the best place to look. It's not seen in a lot of organs. Um, but you can see it in the heart. You can also find organisms in the smooth muscle of the intestine. The organisms are small, round, they have a prominent kinetoplast, and they resemble a similar organism uh, of leishmania. Leishmania uh, has a number of species which causes a, the organisms can easily be confused with each other, but the difference between trypanosoma Cruzi and the various amastigotes of, of uh, leishmania is that leishmania tends to be seen in many different organs, including the skin, the liver, the spleen, etc., etc., um, often contained within macrophages and surrounded by pretty prominent granulomatous and plasmacytic inflammation. Plasma cells are almost always associated with uh, uh, leishmaniasis. Panosoma tends to be encapsulated within tissue cysts, within myofibers. And um, in acute infections may not be associated with much inflammation. In chronic infections, it tends to range much more to the uh, lymphoplasmacytic. Um, and another clue, a lot of people, when they are thinking they have a case of trypanosoma cruzi, which has you know, been seen all over the country, in the last 10 years in animals that were shipped um, and really interfered with, with research uh, for a time because you don't want your research animals to have uh, heart failure and inflammation within the myocardium. But uh, a lot of people would look for these organisms um, and in the chronic stages they're often not there. Um, immunohistochemistry probably is not going to help you. If you can't see them on H&E, immuno is not going to, uh, uh, to help you either. They're not that difficult to find. So uh, um, PCR would probably be the best way to identify chronic cases of trypanosoma cruzi in which the organisms are few and far between. Cardiomyopathy is uh, also a fairly common finding in certain uh, uh, genotypes of aotis or owl monkeys. Um, cardiomyopathy is seen in about 75% of aotises used in research. 25% have a dilatative form and about 50% have the hypertrophic form as seen here in which there is marked expansion of the left ventricular free wall and the interventricular septum at the expense of the left ventricle. The cause of this is not uh, totally known, but suspected mechanisms include 
hypertension associated with captivity. Remember, most of the diseases of, of uh, primates are associated with captivity. And because there are other diseases associated with certain genotypes of aotis or owl monkeys, such as uh, renal disease, which may result in hypertension, as well as uh, vitamin E responsive anemia, both of which we'll look at in subsequent lectures. Um, this may contribute to the, uh, uh, the hypertrophy of the cardiac muscle, which is trying to supply uh, oxygen to the rest of the body in the face of anemia and diminished oxygen carrying capability, as well as systemic hypertension. Here's a terrible looking heart. It's not globoid, it is rhomboid. Um, you can see that the right ventricle is massively dilated, the left ventricle is dilated as well, the heart looks like a big bag. There are white streaks throughout which represent severe myocardial loss and fibrosis. And this is a condition that is known as fibrosing cardial myopathy of great apes. It is seen in uh, chimps, orangutans, and gorillas. It is a major focus of uh, zoo vets throughout the world. And it's thought that up to 65% of chimps and, and probably similar numbers in other forms of great apes have this particular condition. It's most commonly seen in males, more than females. And there's a lot of research and funding that is being directed at this right now, especially in zoo collections, where the animals tend to get a lot older than they would in the wild. And this is a significant problem in those species of great apes, fibrosing cardiomyopathy. Here's a large aortic dissecting aneurysm with hemorrhage. You can see that, that the uh, wall of the aorta is greatly dilated, is markedly thin. There is extrusion of hemorrhage, um, tearing and dissection of, uh, of the aorta. And aortic aneurysms are seen in a wide range of primate species, including man, uh, gorillas, squirrel monkeys, howlers, patus monkeys, but is most commonly seen in the owl monkeys with up to about 9% of aotis monkeys displaying various degrees of aneurysm at autopsy. So think about this when you are autopsying aotis monkeys. As a veterinary pathology resident, I was taught that uh, endocardiosis um, or fibromyxominous uh, dysplasia of the heart valves was primarily seen in dogs. Over the last 20-25 years I realized that you can see it in a wide range of species everything from birds to pigs to to uh, marine mammals to people. So it's not that uncommon in people. It is thought to be genetically driven. It's an autosomal recessive finding. Same thing may be going on in aged macaques, where it is not an uncommon finding, and you see this sort of bulbous dilation of the free uh, edges of the valve leaflets. And what this does is when the heart beats, um, some of the blood is going to be squeezed back through this uh, patent valve and be pushed from the ventricle up into the atrium in areas where this happens at any type of speed. You will see uh, this, these white areas, which are known as jet lesions. These are subendocardial fibrosis due to the blood turbulence hitting this area over and over again. This is mitral valve endocardiosis. 
our last slide of this particular system shows a great vessel, the aorta, which within the wall of which we see these yellow streaks. And this is what we see with atherosclerosis. You can get accumulation of mineral, which will give you white streaks, or fat, which generally gives you yellow streaks within the wall of large vessels. Um, the reason that atherosclerosis is yellow is that this is fat. These animals generally, they're not a spontaneous model. They need to be uh, uh, put on dietary enhancements. Um, so they're eating a lot of high, they're on a high fat diet, eating a lot of uh, pork rinds and Doritos and, no, actually it's a little more scientific than that. But uh, old world macaques, uh, especially Cinemalgus monkeys, which seem to be the best model, not a great model, but a, a better model for atherosclerosis, are given these high fat diets and they will develop these yellow fatty streaks within the great vessels. Remember that the, this is not a spontaneous disease of, of non-human primates. It is of human primates, and that's our own fault. Um, there are very few other species that are, have spontaneous atherosclerosis. Um, pigs and certain type of birds will develop it spontaneously. Even in manipulated uh, dietary manipulated macaques, you tend just to get these fatty streaks and not the large plaques that you often see in man. Um, and it tends to be seen more in uh, diabetic animals when atherogenic diets are fed. So we'll see this in uh, uh, enhanced in old obese macaques on atherogenic diets. So this is great uh, lesion here for, uh, for atherosclerosis. Okay, well that's it for the uh, cardiovascular system. Uh, our next lecture, number five, will talk about the respiratory system of non-human primates. I hope everybody has a great day. and Please come back regularly to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel um, where I will continue to uh, post more of these small uh, lectures on various species.